Welcome back, Pickens Chemistry students. Uh, this video is going to be about atomic symbols. It will serve as an introduction to atoms. And so one of the first things to know for atomic symbols is that atoms are made of three types of particles. We have protons and neutrons, which exist in the nucleus. We also have electrons, which exist along the outside of the atom. The mass number of these particles uh, is relative. And so we use these as integer values. And if we say that the proton has a mass of one mass number, then the mass of the neutron is basically the same as the mass of the proton. And so we say both the proton and the neutron have a mass number of one. The electron is so small and so light that relative to the proton and the neutron, it has a mass number of zero. We can also look at the charge for these particles and protons have a positive charge. Neutrons have a neutral or zero charge and electrons have a negative charge. And so we can use this information to put together what we call atomic symbols. In an atomic symbol, we have the symbol of the element. There is no element with a symbol of X. So we are using X here to represent that. We have the element symbol. We have something down here, which we're gonna call Z. And Z is going to be the atomic number. And up here on the atomic symbol will be A, which is going to be the mass number of the atom. And then here we're gonna have the charge. And it could be more than one plus one minus. This is only gonna come into play when we have ions, which are charged atoms. So charge ions are charged atoms. So what does all this mean? Well, if we take an element like say hydrogen and we wanted to show the atomic symbol for an atom of hydrogen, we might say that's hydrogen with a one and a one. And so what this means, the atomic number, this is Z, the atomic number, and the atomic number here is equal to the number of protons. So if the atomic number is one, then that means that there is one proton in hydrogen. Hydrogen is the first element on the periodic table. When we look for hydrogen on the periodic table, we see a nice big one. And if you remind me in class on Monday, everyone will be getting their very own wallet card for the periodic table. And when you look to see where hydrogen is there on that wallet card, you can see hydrogen here is the first element and that the atomic number is actually on that square in the periodic table. So what else does the rest of the symbol mean? Well, the one here would be the mass number of the whole atom and the mass number is going to be equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Well, if we already said we have one proton and if the mass number is one as well, so A equals one, the mass number A equals one, which equals protons plus neutrons we already know that this hydrogen atom is one proton. So one equals one plus, and hopefully you are saying zero. And so this means that there are zero neutrons in this particular atom of hydrogen, okay? There's no charge here, no charge given. And the charge is always going to be equal to the number of protons minus the number of electrons. So if there's no charge, that means the charge is zero. 
if the charge is zero and it's equal to the number of protons minus the number of electrons, then for us to have no charge on this atom, if we've got one proton in the nucleus, that means the atom must have one electron. So for a neutral atom, you will always find that the number of electrons equals the number of protons. Let's take a look at another atom of hydrogen. This is another type of hydrogen atom here. Still no charge, okay? So we still know protons and electrons will be equal. It's the electrons that can change when we're looking at the same atom. And so we still know that we have one proton. The atomic number equals one, and that equals the number of protons. The mass number equals two, which equals the number of protons plus neutrons. We know that we have one proton already, so that must mean that this atom has one extra or one neutron as well. So one neutron in the atom. And again, no charge, no charge means that the number of protons and electrons are equal. So that means that we have one electron, okay? Let's look at one more, one more type of hydrogen. This symbol, again, atomic number is one. We have one proton. Mass number is now three, which is protons plus neutrons. We still only have one proton because we're still only talking about hydrogen. That means that there are now two neutrons in the atom. And again, no charge. We still only have one electron. Now these three atoms are examples of something special, which I will go into in the next video. But for now, if we were trying to call these names, we would call them the name of the element, which would be hydrogen, hydrogen. And then we would put a dash and we would give the mass number. So this would be hydrogen one. This would be hydrogen two. This would be hydrogen three. And we could make atomic symbols if we know information about an atom. So let's look at carbon. And let's say that that carbon has six protons. Let's mix it up and say that it has seven neutrons and that it has six electrons. If we know the particles in the atom, then we can determine what the symbol is from that. So the fact that it's carbon means that it has to have six protons because when we look at the atomic symbol for carbon, we see that the atomic number for carbon is six. Knowing that it's six protons, that would also tell us that it's carbon. So there's two things here that we're getting information from. And that's the big one is that the protons have to equal six, but the fact that it is carbon also means that the atomic number has to be six. The mass number, A, would be equal to protons plus neutrons, which is in this case, six plus seven. So that would be a 13. And the charge, which we might call Q, okay? The charge would be protons minus electrons, which is in this case, six minus six or zero. And if it's zero, we just don't put a mark there. So this atomic symbol would be complete for this atom. And we could come back and we could call this specifically, we could call it carbon 13. 
So what if I gave you a name of an atom? And we won't normally capitalize. I'm just capitalizing here to make it more clear. What if I just said fluorine 18, fluorine 18? And from that name, you had to figure out what you were talking about. Well, fluorine symbol would be F. Fluorine has an atomic number of nine. And we know that the 18 is protons plus neutrons. We know the protons are nine, which means that the neutrons also have to be nine, right? But what do we put up here for the mass number? We would put the 18 because that's actually in the name of the atom, just like the 13 was here for the carbon. We're not given any other information here about the electrons, so we would assume that the charge was neutral and we wouldn't do anything with that. We can finally take this the other way where we could fill in almost like a little type table or a little chart. Let's say I've got protons, neutrons, electrons, and I wanna figure out how many protons, neutrons, and electrons are in, let's say, potassium 40. So every atomic symbol should have an atomic number. I've given you the symbol and the mass. You can look up and see the K and that the K has to be an atomic number of 19. Remember the atomic number would be the same as the number of protons. The mass number would be the same as the protons plus neutrons. So what could you add to 19 to get 40? In other words, 40 equals 19 plus N and N would be 21. Finally, what if the charge here was one plus? And again, we don't normally write the one, but I'm just gonna emphasize that that's one. This now means our charge does have a value. We haven't given it a value yet, but here we are. Charge is one plus. This equals protons minus electrons. This means that 19 minus something equals positive one. So what can you subtract from 19 and still have one left? The answer would be 18. So this ion would have 18 electrons. The name, just to put it out there, would be potassium 40. And so this is pretty much everything with atomic symbols, other than some definitions that you would need to know. You want to practice making symbols and you want to practice um, interpreting symbols.